Okay, this is a great problem, but you aren't ready for it yet. I need to remind you how to do some basics first. So find this one, if you would, on your iPads. In Schoology, if you look up 9.1 uh, day 2, that's it, 9.1 day 2. It's got today's date on it, but two files have today's date on it. Why? Because we're doing two days in one. Today was an incredibly easy day, and I can combine that with tomorrow. And the reason we're doing two days in one is instead of being behind, we will then be ahead. And we need to be a couple days ahead. And I know for some of you that's like, then we can take a nap day. No, no, that's not the goal. The goal is not to have a nap day in math. You can have that goal as a personal goal. But the reason I want to get ahead and therefore teach two lessons today and again in the near future is because then at the end we'll actually have some time to review. Because otherwise, at the end, if we just kept our current pace up, the, the current pace, if I don't do anything different than what, what would normally happen, you would end up on the last day before finals, the last day, there'd be one day of review. And on that day, I would need to correct the take-home portion of the final. So effectively, you'd have zero days of review. Okay, and that's not good. I can get that to be a lot better if I go a little faster right now. So there's a rationale for why we're going faster. You are tardy, young man. We'll talk about it later. Um, so this great problem is a typical question you'll have to do on the test, but you don't know how to do it yet. You wouldn't even have a chance. But if I do a little bit of review, I think you'll be ready for it in a minute. So I'm going to ask you that you just turn my your iPad my way. I'm going to pause when we do this. Good. I'm Almost everybody's with me. So this is the part where we add a page because you're not really ready for that yet. And go back a notch. Do you remember the arithmetic kind where you'd have like 10 and you add 2 and you got 12 and then you add 2 and you got 14, dot, dot, dot? All right. Well, for today, we have two goals. Number one, to adjust, address problems where we're like, I'm going to tell you that 132 is eventually going to be one of the terms. You get how since I'm going by even numbers that it's yeah, it's going to eventually get there. But then figuring out which term it is, it isn't that hard. You just have to use the formulas. Okay, You have to understand the formulas. But i got to remind those, you of those formulas. And then I'm going to teach you how to take something like this. And let's just go a distinct number of terms, as in it doesn't just go forever. Uh, and it stops right there. Two things, how to write a formula that will generate that in sigma notation. Have you ever seen one of these things before? And I think, eh, I better draw it this way. There, that's a sigma. If you've ever seen this like on chalkboards uh, in college math classes and stuff, like you know, like you didn't know what was going on, it's a special math symbol. You're going to now know what this actually means. It's not that complicated. It just means a summation of a whole bunch of terms. So you're going to be able to write a sigma formula, and it will look like this. And then this formula that we know will come into play. And again, you're not ready for this yet, but I'm just trying to give you the big picture of what your goal is for today, all right? So there's some thoughts on what we're going to learn today. So I want to go back a notch right there. You have a formula in your head. Let's see if we can get it out in the open. A sub n, and then finish that formula. Pause for a second while you give this one a try. Okay, so a sub n equals a plus n minus 1 times d. How many of you were able to pull that from the recesses of your brain? If you didn't have that one down, you need it. And really, really, not just like for today. This this is the big thing for the next test. One nice thing, I know a lot of you guys have tests between now and Friday. There's no tests in here. Okay. The tests in here will be after break, not like the day after break either. Okay. So this is a long unit. So the plus side is at least you can focus on your science and your whatever for the next uh, few days 
uh, in your, you know, you'll have a little bit of homework for math, but your big studying is going to be for other things. All right. So what if I said that I wanted the fifth term? Would you just please use this thing and figure out what the fifth term is? I know you could just do it in your head, but don't. Use the formula. Because what if I don't say the fifth term? What if I say the 212th term? You don't want to just try to do it in your head. Find the fifth term. Just to get us started, row four, question one, that's you. Tell me what you think we should do. Um, I think we should put two in. Put two in like this. Not like that? Oh, you want to put in a 5 into the equation. That is correct. We want the fifth term, we put a 5 in. And we get a sub 5 is all that. Except there's more. There is a 2 somewhere. Where could the 2 go? D or A? D, the common difference. That minus that. Okay, so D is 2. Remember that it's this minus this. And also you're like, oh, it's so obvious that it goes up by two. But what if the terms are this? That's the first term, that's the second term. What's the common difference? You take that minus that. 2n minus 12 minus 2n plus 6. And that's in parentheses. Make sure you know that. And then the 2n minus 2n will be gone. And negative 12 minus 6 means negative 18. It's actually subtracting 18. That makes sense to you? If you actually subtract 18, watch what happens. Minus 18. And the positive 6 goes to a negative 12. That makes sense, doesn't it? All right. So once again, Try to resist the urge to just do little stuff in your head. To find the common difference, you take that minus that. You'll need to know that in case the terms change into n, q, and p. And what's the common difference now? q minus n. Very good. Okay, or p minus q. And those should equal each other, which is a system of equations. Okay, anyway, back to this. And if I wanted to get the final answer, I need a, and a is 10. A is the amount you started with. So it's 10 plus 5 minus 1 is 4 times 2. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 10 is 18. And if you think about it, it's it's easy to test in your head later and say, is that reasonable that that could be a couple terms down the road? Yeah, it's reasonable. Okay. So let's see if you're ready for this. What if I say 28? Would you agree that 28 is a term that would happen somewhere in the sequence down the road. Okay? Figure out which term it is. Hint. You need to use this formula again. 28 occurs down the road in this sequence. Which term is it? You can solve an equation. The equation depends on that one that's on the board that hopefully you have memorized. Twenty-eight goes there. What's A? Ten. What's M? I don't know. That's the whole point. All right, Mr. O F. What else can I do to solve this thing? It's got two variables in it, so I can't really solve it right now. I mean, you must know one of these variables. Oh, that's kind of a big deal. Has that been happening this whole time? <laughs> Welcome to your new seat. I'm not saying that, that you haven't figured out the answer. You did very well on your last test, but you really ought to be able to see the board. 
Oh, you. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you were saying you can't actually see the board. All right, all right, all right. Well, I have N and I have D left. There you go. That's a two. So I'm going to say 28 equals 10 plus N minus 1 times 2. Okay, then I just have to solve it. That's it. Can you solve when you get N and what is N? N is what term it is. All right. Should be super simple. Subtracting 10, I got 18 equals 2 times n minus 1. Now I'm dividing. Now some people would multiply this out. You could, but it would be kind of a wasted step. I can just divide by 2 right now. 9 equals n minus 1. Now I can add 1. 10. Raise your hand if you had 10. Awesome. Okay. Next. This black one. I want to remind you of something before we even start it. If I have two variables in an equation, can I still solve the equation? No. But what if I had two equations that had two variables, like this? Can you solve that equation? No. But what if I also told you that x plus y is equal to 6? Then yeah, you got a system of two equations you can solve for two variables. What if I had three variables? Three equations would be needed. Okay, so with that being said, see if you can figure this one out. Hint, it's all about the equations that I've taught you, the formulas. Pausing. Okay, here's a thought. Well, he said it's part of this equation. Maybe I should use this equation. If you didn't get that far, I'm kind of disappointed that you weren't able to figure out that you probably used that. Then I can stick numbers in it. Well, the 40th term of sequence is 3. I hope you didn't get this backwards. The 40th term, the 40 goes here, and the 40th term is 3. That's the term, 3. I know it seems like a really small number to be the 40th term, but it'll make sense once you figure this all out. Okay. Now that's an equation, but it has two variables in it. I give you a monster hint that you would need to write another equation then. The other equation involves the 79th term being negative 14. You see where I'm going with this? The 79th term, I'm going to do this again, except the 79th term is negative 14. A, I don't know the starting term. It says find the first term, so I obviously don't know what it is plus, and this time it wasn't the 40th term, it was the 79th term times d. And there's two equations with two variables. It really isn't that hard, is it? I mean, you can, I, I don't think it's that hard. Stick the numbers in. Stuck it in here, stuck it in here, stuck one in there, stuck one in there. And now how do you solve that? Well, that takes a little bit of grinding it out algebra. We haven't figured this out yet, and I'm going to say it for the umpteenth time. Just like in calculus, this pre-calc isn't hard. It's actually the algebra that's going to cause most of you to get it wrong. It's the algebra of solving the system of two equations. That's the hard part here. If you're really good at the algebra, it won't be that bad. All right, so this is 3 equals A plus 40 minus 1 is 39D. And this green one is negative 14 equals A times 78D. And then I personally would probably have solved this for A. And then, because A is almost alone here. And then I would have A alone, and I'd put it here. Yeah, it's a little bit icky, but it's not that bad. You just do substitution, and then I got, I got D alone, and now I can just solve for D.
and if you're trying to follow that, here's where I solved for A, and then I stuck that in right there. Okay, I don't even need you to finish it. Do you have a question? Do you, if you think there's something wrong, you just got to let me know. It's generally possible. I could have screwed something up. I got A alone by subtracting 39D, so I could say 3 minus 39D. If you'd rather see this as 3 minus 39D, I, you, could, you could. Oh, there's a plus. There is a plus. There's a plus. Supposed to be a plus right there. So this is a plus 78D. Kind of disappointed one of you guys didn't find that, but... I found it. There we go. Okay. So, what's next? That's the hardest kind on, in fact, that's it for the first lesson. The second lesson is, and then that's why this would have been a really easy day to double up. Uh, the second lesson is about, let me see if I can find it here, 9.2 day one. Everybody go back into Schoology. I would have you just do this on a piece of paper, except you wouldn't have uh, the homework, which is right here. So everybody go find this file now. Uh, it's called 9.2 Day 1. I'm going to pause for a second while I clean up my copy of this file. The file looks like this on page 1. 9.2 Day 1. Would you please turn your iPads my way so I can see how many people I'm still waiting for. The feedback loop there, sorry about that. I'm at two-thirds of the class. The rest of you, please find it quickly. This is again under today's date, which is 12-17, 9.2 day one. This is your intro, the first time you will see these, a sigma. Do you remember the first time you learned limits? When you then used them a fair amount after that? Okay. This is the first time you're going to do this but yet you're going to use it a lot this year and in calculus. Like for the next month, because it'll be into January before we test on this, and then late January before you actually have your final, you're going to have to know sigmas all the way through that whole time. Okay? So sigma is a Greek letter. This little, like, E-looking thing, that's a sigma. And what it means is a sum, where you add a whole bunch of things up. A cell phone goes on my desk because you're paying attention to it and not me. Bring it up here. Set it up here. Thank you. Um, so it can take something like this and generate a whole bunch of terms like that. That's what they can do. And they're, it's really easy to do. All I got to do is take the numbers from 1 to 6. You see, pay attention here. This starts with this, ends with that, and I stick them in here. So let's put in the number 1. See, it says start with 1, so I'm going to start with 1. I put a 1 right here. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5. See how I got that? you got a headphone in. Unplug, please. This, 2. Take a 2 in. Why 2? Because you go from 1 to 6, and you only use, like, whole numbers. I'm going to say integers, because you can have negative numbers if you want. I'm going to stick in a 2, and then I get 4 plus 3 is 7. See what's happening? It's just generating each of these terms. Why does it stop at 15? Notice there's no dot, dot, dot after that. Because when you stick in a 6, the last number, the thing on the top of the sigma, that's the last one you do. Up there, that's saying 6 is last. Then I get 12 plus 3 is 15, and that's the last number. And then one more thing. It's got a plus in between all of them. That's not just like a little separator, like a comma. That means you actually add all of them. So you add these one, two, three, four, five, six numbers together to get your grand total final answer. Okay? All right, I'm going to give you one right now. Sigma from I equals one to three, a nice short one, 2n minus seven. Let's 
see if you caught what that means. This, believe it or not, is too high up for the ACT test. Yay, you've exceeded the ACT test. This is considered too much like calculus. Now, I could be wrong on that, but I can just tell you I have never seen it on any retired ACT test. Like, ever once, ever, never seen that symbol. Unless it was in the context of a question where they teach you something. That's a, that's a type of ACT question. Here, I'm going to teach you something new you've never seen before, and then you should use it. Like, that's a, it's a, it's a rare ACT question. It's like maybe one out of 60 questions. They'll teach you something you've never learned before in a little tiny paragraph, and then you have to apply it. Use it immediately. So on the ACT, they might have said something like, here's a sigma notation, and it means that you would get the following terms. 2 times 1 minus 7 plus what would be next? 2 times 2 minus 7 plus... What would be next? 2 times 3 minus 7, and that would be it. Like, they could give you that, like, show you how it works, and then say, so, what is this? And then you have to apply it. 2 to, let's say, 4 of 3n. And then the kid has to, like, learn from this little example problem quick what the answer is. All right, just to clarify what this was. This was negative 5, 4 minus 7 is negative 3, and this was negative 1, and if I actually add them all together, I get 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and negative 9 is the final answer. Raise your hand if you had negative 9. Sweet. Okay, try the one I just wrote. Act like it's the ACT, and they had just showed you how that worked, and you have to now apply that to this. It's not exactly the same, but it's very similar. The stigma. You guys heard of the Greeks? Greek fraternities? And there's, you know, Lambda, Lambda, Kappa, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, Sigma is one of the ones that you'll see every now and then in a, you uh, know, fraternity or a sorority. Okay, so you go 3 times 2 plus, they're always plus, 3 times what's next? 3 plus 3 times 4. And that would make 6 plus 9 plus 12. And 18, 27? Did you get 27? Okay, awesome. There you go. You know, one more thing in math. Now, that isn't that tough. In fact, it's easy enough. That just be an R, this would be an R2 question. It's a little too easy. But to make it more like an R3-ish question, what if we go backwards and we say we have 6, 9, and 12, and I want you to write one of these for it? You know what I'm saying? What if you had to like go back and figure out how these three numbers would lead you to this sigma? So let me show you one like that. I'm just going to give you one, and I'll show you how I do it. 8, 10, 12, dot, 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 except you can't really do dot, dot, dot yet because I haven't taught you how to do ones that are infinite. We always just had a certain number of terms. So I'm going to just say it's three terms, just those three. And if I really want to do it right, I have to say 8 plus 10 plus 12. Because that's what changes it from a sequence to a series. Okay, now I know the sigma. Kind of looks like a big E. And then I always say I equals something on the bottom, like I equals... Well, let me give you a hint. When you do it the way I'm teaching you, you always just say from 1 to... And then how many terms there are. I'm going to stick in one to get this one. 
Stick in two to get that one. Stick in three to get that one. So it's from one to three. That's pretty easy, isn't it? Now the question just becomes, what do I put here? Is it like 8n? Is it that simple? No, because if I stuck in a 1, it would work for the first term. It would give me an 8. But I stick in a 2, it's a 16, and that's not what 10 is. So no, it's not quite that simple. Do you remember me saying that the formulas would be what it was all about? A plus n minus 1 times d. Does that apply here? Oh, yes, it does. Because we are generating terms in arithmetic sequence it's adding each time right and so what's a eight what's d it's a common difference two and there it is that's my answer could have simplified it more sure but let me prove to you it works if i stick in a one and then a two and then a three I'll get these three terms. When I stick in a 1, watch what happens. 1 minus 1 makes 0, and 2 times 0, that whole thing is 0. So then the answer is 8. All right, so I got what I wanted. And then I stick in a 2. And then 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2 plus 8 is 10. See, See how important those formulas are? You're using them everywhere. Okay, then 12. 12 comes from me sticking in this last number here, 3. Stick a 3 in, 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 8 is 12. Yay, it worked. Let's see if you could do one. Ready? And I really shouldn't put commas, I should put pluses in between them. I'll make them a different color so you get the that I have three answers, negative 9, negative 7, and negative 3, that are all going to get added together. You can do the sigma thing. You re hopefully remember that I said we were always going to start, stay with me, with the 1 on the bottom. Always use a 1 on the bottom. So if you got this much, I'm proud of you. You remembered an important part. And then, who can help me start the middle part? Can you do it? What's the middle part? Just the formula, sure. You're filling in the formula, just the generic formula. You are exactly right, very nice. Now we can go one more step. Since you don't have a cell phone to distract you, maybe you can answer this question. What should go in A and D? A. Yep, and D should be? You're right. Because this minus this, negative 7 minus 9, is 2, right? Mm. So what, what, what's going on? Isn't the common difference supposed to be this minus this? Negative 7 minus negative 9, which is negative 7 plus 9 which is 2. So you're right. It's 2. Okay. So then, I know there's going to be some kid who's going to be comparing with some other kid. And they're both going to start with this. I think everybody knows it has to be 1 to 3. But some kid's going to say, but I got this other way, and it works, and it goes like this. And it's true. It works. What's the difference? So these two kids are comparing, and the one's like, well, I, I did what Mr. Server said, and the other kid's like, I got a different way, and I got this. What's really happening? Yes. Yeah. This is just a simplification of that. They are equal to the same thing. Because I got a 2n from the 2 times the n. 
and here's the negative 2 and the negative 9 makes a total of negative 11. So either way it works and it, they're both fine. There, yay, you've learned everything from two days. Now let me tell you which problems I want you to do for practice. If you don't practice, don't expect to actually do well. Okay, there are some people that really think they can get away with that. It's like like somebody eating, you know, six cookies a day and thinking they're going to lose weight. It's just not going to happen. Okay? If, which that's me, by the way, um, if you think I'm just going to, like, you know, do my homework, like, a problem every now and then, and I'll, I'll be okay on the test. That's not likely, unless, again, there are people that can get away with six cookies a day because their metabolism is just crazy different than everybody else's. Maybe you're that smart. But if it hasn't worked so far for you, if you aren't getting straight A's without doing your homework, then you're not that smart. You can't do that. You need to actually do your homework. Some people can do a little bit less homework than other people. It's all unique to each person. But please, bottom line, I really want you to do your homework because I really want you to do well. That's really all. That it, you know, It's actually easier for me if you don't do your homework. I just put a zero in the grade book. No grading necessary. I just really want you to do well. So here's 21 through 25, this page, just this page. It's got both kinds of questions on it. It's got some where you figure out what the terms are. Like, let's start this one together. Since this is the first part of your assignment, I'm supposed to put in 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5. And then add them all up because it's a sigma problem. So if I put in a 1, I get, and trust me on this, don't use the decimals, 3 over 2. I know some of you are like, I want 1.5. Well, fine. Do that then. But watch what happens when I put in a 2. Well, we'll add them in a second. So I'm going to put a 2 here. And when I put in the 2, then that's 3 squared over 2 squared, which is 9 over 4. And you are right. It is adding. And then the next one. I'm going to put in a 3. 3 to the 3rd is 27 over 2 to the 3rd is 8. 27 eighths. And you might be thinking, oh, I hope I have a calculator in this test. I'm almost positive. I'm not positive. I haven't actually looked, but I'm almost positive that calculators are allowed in this test. And you still need those formulas like that. That's going to be a really important that you're really good with the formulas. All right, am I finished with this one? No, you can finish it, though. You have to do 1 through 5, which, of course, is 5. I know that can be confusing sometimes. Because 0 through 5 isn't 5. 0 through 5 is actually 6 thing. But if you always start with a 1 on the bottom, then that's just how many items there are total. Okay. So these are the only thing I need you to do from this homework. Then on the other homework assignment, the other Schoology file that we had, this one, let me show you which ones I want you to do there. I've chosen wisely for you. You should do this one, which is a really easy one. The tenth term, and you stick in. Now, these are your numbers. You know your A, and you can figure out that minus that. These aren't too hard. This one's a little tricky. You should do it, though, because there's stuff like this on your tests. This is 9.1, day two, on the first page of the homework. And remember me giving you a hint on this? What's the common difference? If it's arithmetic, we know it's a common difference. It's not one of those common ratio ones. It's common difference. So how do you get the common difference again? If it was simple, like 2 plus 6 is 8 plus 6 is 14, you would just go 8 minus 2. So how do you get the common difference on these guys? What minus what? Uh, nope. You're right. For the top one, that would be right. Okay. For this one, 2s plus 1 and then minus. minus. There you go. That's how you get the common difference. And you'll figure out, oh, they're just adding n plus 3 each time or, or whatever. Okay. Then you'll know the common difference. And then they want to know n. I bet you anything you'll need the formula. Keep saying it's all about the formulas. And then you'll be able to stick stuff in the formula. All right. And the last ones I want you to do on this is you may skip number 10. I want you to do both parts of number 11. 
that keeps it reasonably sized. If you actually do all of this, it will really help your homework. I don't know why you don't have it out. It's confusing to me. Have your homework out. It makes me think you're just not going to do your homework, so why should I circle the ones I'm... Oh, you, you do. All right. Just... Okay. That was really quick. Okay. All right. That's all I got for you for today.